Uh, Brian, why yes, you water my tank? Well, we are O2 cleaning your bottles. So we're going to put this little homemade mixture in here. And then we're going to scrub it up really good. And O2 clean your tank so that we can start putting nitrox in it. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hicker Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now in today's video, we're going to talk about O2 cleaning. I'm not actually going to describe or go through the process of O2 cleaning, but more importantly, I'm going to talk about why we O2 clean cylinders and when a cylinder actually needs to be O2 clean. So with that being said, let's jump into today's video and let you guys learn a little bit more about O2 cleaning. Alright guys, so what I'm actually doing here is getting rid of all the hydrocarbons in the cylinder. And I want to show you really quick what this system looks like, and then I'll kind of explain a little bit about how we're doing it, but I want to talk more importantly about why we're doing it. So if I take this system out, you'll see just a couple Brillo pads, or one long Brillo pad, right? And it's on a long um, pipe here, if you will, or drill bit. And I'm sticking it down in the cylinder, and as I'm spinning this, you can kind of see there, it is going through and cleaning the entire internal side of the cylinder. Now I do have a soapy solution in here. We're not going to talk about what I'm actually using, but that soapy solution is there to get rid of hydrocarbons. And in short, let's kind of explain what a hydrocarbon is and why we want to get rid of them. First of all, let's think about what creates a fire because there is a huge fire risk anytime we partial pressure or we put O2 directly in your cylinder. So if it's a deco bottle or even a nitrox bottle, anytime we're dealing with O2, there is a risk of fire. So what is O2 within what we call the fire triangle? The O2, that is the fuel source that we just can't get rid of because it's always there. And when we think about compressing gas and putting that gas in a cylinder, we're creating a heat source from the compression of the gas. So we actually have two of the ingredients needed to create a fire already there. Now the last ingredient is a spark or an ignition system and this is where the hydrocarbons come in. I want you to think of hydrocarbons as just very small pieces of metal and if we get metal to metal contact we can create a spark. So we've got the heat, we got the fuel, and now we're going to add in the hydrocarbon and during the filling stage alone we can get enough ingredients together to create a fire. Well, I can't get rid of the heat source, and I can't get rid of the fuel source, but what I can is get rid of those hydrocarbons or the spark ignition system by simply cleaning the cylinder itself. So primarily what I want you to understand about O2 cleaning is this is more for us, the fuel operators, than it is for you, the diver itself. The likelihood of this cylinder exploding on your back is slim to none. Probably going to say it's never going to happen. However, it could possibly happen during the filling stage. And we fill a ton of mixed gases here, and that is just something I don't want to risk. So we tell all our customers, hey, if you're going to be filling nitrox in your cylinder, your cylinder needs to be O2 clean. And that's basically what we're doing. Now, I kind of showed you what we are the process here. We've got a solution in here. We're cleaning that cylinder. We are going to clean the cylinder out after this and dry it out. Well, let's walk over here really quick because I want to show you how we test for hydrocarbons. So Trey, let me have the camera here. You guys have seen this before. Every time that we visually inspect a cylinder, we look down in it and we use a light source. And as you can see, I'm just using a light source here. And I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but there you can kind of see in the cylinder looks pretty clean. I know it doesn't really focus very well, but it does look very clean down in there. However, this is not the proper light that we use for O2 cleaning. This is the proper light. That is an ultraviolet light. If you look down in there, you'll see it's kind of blue in color and the camera's probably not going to focus here for you. But basically what I'm looking for is different types of hydrocarbon. And let me explain kind of what they look like. So imagine if you will, you're on a crime scene and you got a black light and you're shining it over a bed, you're looking for different types of body fluids, you're looking for different types of blood splatter, and you can see that directly under a black light. 
Well, the same thing's going to occur here. We can actually see those in a cylinder. And if we see those specs, then we know there's hydrocarbons in the cylinder. Also, it can kind of look like an oil slick or some type of gassy film. Think of a, a body of water and you got just a little drop of gas that you drop on the water. You can see that sheen of oil or gas on top of the water. Well, we can also see that sheen or that oil slick inside that cylinder. And how does it get in there? Well, very easily my hands. So when I'm visiting a tank and I'm adding a new O-ring to the valve, I'm actually putting hydrocarbons. There's hydrocarbons all over my hand. And so I'm putting it on the valve before that valve gets screwed down in there. When I'm visiting a cylinder, if we use, let's say, some type of uh, magnifier, this is the magnifier that we use to look down in there, it's my hands are actually touching the magnifier itself and then I put this down in there now the threads are going to have hydrocarbons built into it so it's simply put hydrocarbons can come from anything but they come from the oil that's in your skin as well so when I go to clean not only the cylinder but the valve itself I'm going to put gloves on before I actually clean this valve and I'm going to be cleaning this valve in a couple of different ways. I can clean it the same method I'm here with the same soapy solution. I can put it say in an ultrasonic cleaner and there's many different types of cleaning solutions that we use. Sometimes we will use a, a simple green mixture of just a little bit of simple green of water. Sometimes we can use this blue gold is one of my favorite type of cleaner here. We can even just use Dawn dish detergent and water as well to clean up those hydrocarbons. If we think about what Dawn does, Dawn is a great degreaser, and that's what we're trying to get rid of. Those hydrocarbons, those microscopic pieces of metal, or grease if you will, that's what we're getting rid of. So Dawn works very well, which inside the cylinder I've actually got hot water, hot tap water, and Dawn dish detergent. Works very well as well. Now, once we get this cleaned out, we're going to flush it out with some uh, good clean water, just fresh clean water, and then of course we're going to use a drying mechanism to dry these cylinders. We will clean our customer's valves. It's actually our cameraman's valves here. We're going to clean these valves really good for him, get them dried out really good, and then we'll reassemble the tank and then we'll go downstairs and of course fill uh, the cylinder with a little bit of O2 so that we can get the mixture of nitrox that he actually wants. So guys, before we finish up, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Viz stickers, and I also want to talk about these Nitrox stickers that you learn about in your Nitrox class. Because I always ask my or ask this question to my Nitrox students: How do I know that I can actually put Nitrox in a cylinder? This white cylinder right here has a Nitrox sticker. Does that tell me that I can put Nitrox in it? No. It just tells me that that cylinder is going to be classified for nitrox. Doesn't mean it's been O2 clean, doesn't even mean it's been vised or hydro, it just means that's going to be used as a nitrox cylinder. If we look at trace tanks here, there is no nitrox sticker. So how do we know that a cylinder has been O2 clean or it's going to be safe to put oxygen in or any mixed gas? Well, the reality here is we don't know that. We don't know even if it's got a nitrox sticker, even if I personally O2 clean this, and even if I stamp, on the Viz sticker that it's 100% clean or I can put 100% dough too, I still do not know that this cylinder is going to be safe to use once it leaves my site. So once I get this O2 cleaned, I get it inspected, I get nitrox put in it, and then my customer goes off and he dives it and brings it back and says, hey, can you put more nitrox? I personally do not know what he done to that cylinder once he left. All that I've got to go by is is the visual inspection sticker where it says that it's been O2 cleaned. Now, there is a lot more trust given from the fill operators to the customers than there is from the customer to the fill operators. And unfortunately, this makes it dangerous for us because if we have not personally done this, every single time you bring your tank in to get it filled, then there is a risk whenever we go downstairs to fill O2 in it of that cylinder eruption or a fire hazard actually happening. So I want you guys to understand there's more trust given from us, the fill operators, to you as the customer or the diver who's needing an O2 fill than there is from you to us filling your cylinder. And there's more risk for us as the fill operators than there are or there is to you. So there's a lot of trust given out there in the industry that people don't actually think about. And that trust comes from the industry to you as the end user, not necessarily the other way around. But to answer your question, it's typically this visual inspection sticker. It usually tells us whether a tank's been O2 cleaned or not. Now, I do want to kind of leave you with a final thought here. 
how long is a visual inspection good for? Or more or less, how long is a hydro inspection you, uh, good for? I know a lot of you guys are going to say, well, the visual inspection is good for a year. The hydro inspection is good for five years because that's what you were taught in your open water program. And that is kind of an industry standard. That's what we go by. If you bring your cylinder to me and said, hey, Brian, can you fill this? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the hydro stamp. Okay, it's within the last year or last five years. I'm going to look at the visual inspection sticker. I'm going to say, yep, it's within the last year. And hey, it's been O2 clean. I'm going to put nitrox in this cylinder. So I could do that. But the reality is it's only good until that cylinder is out of my sight. So once I'm done with the cylinder, I give it back to the customer. He drives off site. I have no clue what he or she does with that cylinder before he brings it back. So technically your viz is dead once it's outside my site. Once again, there's more trust given from us, the fill operators to you, the end user, than there is in the reverse of that. So it's just some food for thought. This is why you should really take good care of your tank because, you know, unless you got your own compressor, if you don't have a fill operator to fill your tank, you're not going to get an air fill or a nitrox fill or a tri-mix fill. So please take good care of your cylinder. Take good care. Have good tank etiquette when you're out there um, in, in the diving world. And when you come in, you know, let us know if you dropped a cylinder. You know, the video that we did where the gentleman damaged his valve and stuff like that. Let us know, and I don't remember, it's actually, I think this valve. Let us know if you've dropped your cylinder in the field because unless we notice it, there's more risk for us than there is actually for you. So it's just a little food for thought. All right, guys, well, we're going to go ahead and get finished up on this other tank. I still got to get these valves cleaned up here. We got to get these tanks dried out really well, and then we're going to fill them up for, uh, put some nitrox in them for Trey, and then you're actually starting your side mount course next week. Is that right, Trey? Yep. Perfect. So brand new year starting here in 2025, and we got a brand new side mount student here behind the camera, but he's learning a little bit about O2 cleaning, learning about why we do it. And if you've got any questions, comments, or concerns about O2 cleaning, drop me a comment down below. I'll try to answer that question the best I can. And hey, if you want to see a full video on how the O2 cleaning process actually works, maybe we'll get one of those made for you this year as well. But guys, that's going to do it for today. Once again, if you've got any questions, comments, or concerns about O2 cleaning or your cylinder specifically, reach out to me down below in the comment section and I'll try to answer your questions the best I can. But guys, that's going to do it for today. Take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.